Hi, I'm Jamie Allen, and I did my curriculum scholar paper about Nell Noddings. I found out she is quite the educational philosopher. Um, Nell Noddings was born in 1929 on the East Coast of the United States, and she grew up in a working class family. And she married her high school sweetheart, I believe, after she put herself through college. And together they had five biological children and adopted five other children. Um, throughout her career, she has been a math teacher, which is pretty apparent in her articles because she likes to incorporate um, suggestions for how curriculum can be adjusted through math. And she was a school administrator, and then she moved into higher education, actually um, teaching at Stanford uh, and earning her doctorate. And she is still alive and appears to be well loved by um, her family, which has grown to include multiple students and scholars. She was majorly influenced by John Dewey, who we are familiar with, um, 20th century feminist issues, as well as standardized testing. And this becomes pretty apparent in her work. Um, so what I did for this particular paper was I found five articles and I tried to find a wide range of time, which was pretty easy. Um, so the first article I started with was from 1991. Um, and then the last article was from 2018. So um, roughly three decades, and um, she has been working longer than that, but those are the ones that I chose. Um, and the first article is about how, whether we like it or not, as educators, we are teaching values. So even if we are not trying to, um, the things that we enforce are the things that we are telling kids are of value. And so what she has in this particular article urged um, educators and administrators to do is simply ask why. Why are we doing this? Why do we um, give demerits for tardiness? Why do we have to have things turned in on a particular due date? And so her rationale is that when we ask why, we can be more deliberate about the values that we pass along to our students. And even if our actions don't change, um, by engaging in these questions, we are engaging in the philosophy of teaching. Um, I think this is a really important place um, for starting, and I really valued what she had to say about simply acknowledging what we're doing in the classroom. In uh, the next article that she wrote, which is a little bit later in 1991, early 1992, um, called The Gender Issue, she explores what education would be like with um, a more feminist point of view. So I, I particularly liked this quote, Without realizing it, most of us look at gender issues in education with the masculine experience as the standard. And in this day and age, I feel like we are aware more of this and becoming more aware that um, one particular perspective is not appropriate. So um, I'm glad that we have learned from this and moved on from this, but this is really um, an interesting element. Um, that she discusses. And she is really good about recognizing that women are not a monolith, um, but that common female experiences, particularly those that incorporate care, have not been primarily considered in education and suggest that perhaps they should have, and perhaps that would be um, a high quality element to consider. I find this interesting because um, we are now beginning to implement social emotional learning. And so it just seems like she was ahead of the time and we should have probably heeded her suggestions earlier in her life. 
1995, she wrote Teaching Themes of Care. And the major theme of this is that we should be educating the whole child. And she does this, um, or she says that we should do this by educating children about the ethics of care. So we need to talk to them about how to care for themselves, how to care for others that we're in close relationship with, how to care for strangers and global others, um, how to care for the natural world and its non-human creatures, and how to care for the human-made world, as well as ideas. And so her idea is that by exploring all of these items, we can create whole citizens that are better able to participate in society and contribute as high quality citizens. Um, she suggests that there are a couple of different ways that we can educate this whole child. Um, a major, another major motif in her writing is um, interdisciplinary studies. She's very interested in incorporating um, a lot of different things. So rather than having everything be parceled out and taught separately, um, having things integrated would be something she would like to see. So talking about philosophy in mathematics or um, different things like that are, are some of her suggestions. She also indicates that our curriculum choice as educators is another way that we can demonstrate care for children. Um, and some of this is because we can examine these ethics of care um, through our curriculum choice. Additionally, she talks about how we can group learners, um, suggesting that in the same way that small children stay with the same teacher for an entire year, perhaps they could stay together for multiple years and perhaps in the high school level, um, we could stay with groups of students rather than sending them off to all kinds of different separate things, um, because then we're able to better build relationships with our students rather than only having them for a short amount of time and then moving on. And finally, she suggests that we have to genuinely care for our students. Um, this really spoke to me, especially because I am the leader of our Bulldog Time Committee. Um, Bulldog Time is um, a 30 minute period where we have the same students for four years. It's kind of like a homeroom. And the whole purpose of um, that area is to connect with the students, develop relationships with them, and so, so that they know that there is an adult in the building who cares about them, who wants them to succeed, um, so they can grow with them throughout the years. In 2005, um, Nell wrote again um, about what does it mean to educate the whole child. And I don't mean to say that she wasn't writing in between that time. She certainly was, um, but I skipped ahead and picked this one. Um, I really find her to be a, a visionary voice. Um, as I look at what she's saying and I see what is happening today, it's it makes me very sad that we didn't follow her suggestions. Um, and I think we, we would have been better off if we had. So um, in this particular article, she is talking about how much um, standardized testing is being overemphasized and how that is probably a negative thing for our students. And I've got a couple of quotes from this because I, they really spoke to me. Um, too many highly proficient people commit fraud, pursue paths to success marked by greed, and care little about how their actions affect the lives of others. And um, with this, she is simply telling us that it is not enough for us to make sure that students are um, proficient on educational items, on standardized testing. We should be educating the whole child helping them become better citizens in the world um, who care about others. And the way that we do that is by demonstrating care to them. Um, the second quote that I got from this particular article, I felt um, very strongly about. She says, it is not sufficient and it may actually undermine our democracy to concentrate on producing people who do well on standardized tests 
and who defines success as getting a well-paid job. Democracy means more than voting and maintaining economic productivity, and life means more than making money and beating others to material goods. And I found that to be particularly poignant um, with everything that's going on in our current world. We can we can argue that yes, that is accurate. We have to have more than um, economic productivity. We have to care for others. If we don't do that. Um, then our democracy does not mean much. So I thought those were just really clear points about why we need to educate the whole child. Her next article, or the next article that I observed from her is from 2012, and um, it is called The Language of Care Ethics. And so she is going back around and talking again about some of the same things that she did in the early 90s. So she really hasn't moved away from this idea, um, but she is furthering it in looking at how we can do this. And so um, she suggests that we have to complete this by giving specific attention to care, giving children the attention that they need, um, teaching them how to reciprocate that attention um, for others, um, showing them what empathy looks like and not asking necessarily if somebody did that to you how would that make you feel but asking them instead to put themselves in their shoes and say how do you think she felt about that and so developing that empathy understanding the different types of listening um, where we're listening to respond we're listening to understand and then promoting genuine engagement in the curriculum and in the classroom so it's more than just hey, we should incorporate care. These are more specific um, elements that we that she instructs us on, on how we can um, implement care and ethics into the classroom. And the final article that I looked at was called Making Connections in the School Curriculum, and this she wrote in 2018. It is more directed at higher education, um, and that's something that I thought was probably due to her progression um, throughout her life from uh, lower grades to uh, the university. Um, and this one talks about how at this point in time, we have a real problem with polarization and that largely comes from our inability to communicate effectively and our inability to compromise. And in light of our most recent election and the real um, animosity that I've seen online, um, it seems that she was pretty, pretty on track. She has some suggestions about how we can do this and really focuses on um, the items that were mentioned in the previous article so that we can develop those empathetic um, skills. I really appreciated that her work seemed to go in revolution. So she would start in one place and go and then come back around to that other, but you know, in a spiral where it's progressively getting um, more, but it's not, not different. It's just a, a stronger idea. And I found it that I really, was drawn to her teachings and her philosophies. Um, I can see how they are apparent throughout some of the progressions in education. And I, it makes me curious to know how much um, we have started to change curriculum and direction based on some of her um, suggestions and philosophies, which are drawn from others as well. But I just, I felt like and we should have listened to her and we could have maybe avoided some of the traumas that we've experienced with school shootings and different things like that. If we would have started that in the 90s, if we would have been teaching children about how to care for each other um, and how to care for others, how to care for the world, we might be in a completely different place right now. And so it makes me want to pay attention to what her suggestions have been consistently to see if it is something that could help us move in a better direction. Um, I'm currently reading a totally different book called Tightrope 
Americans Reaching for Hope. It's by Nicholas Kristoff and Cheryl Wu Dunn. And it has some very, very specific lines about, it's an indictment of America and where we went astray. And it talks about choosing individuals over our individual selves, over community, um, an unconcerned citizenry, poor public policy, and a reduction in the quality of life for the general population. And I just found that really striking that all of those items were connected to the lessons that Nottings presented in all of her writing. And again, it made me wonder if we had followed her suggestions, if we would be in a better place. Um, I think I agree with Nodding's philosophy. It's about time that we try something different. Um, using her instruction and perspective taking, I think we can help America pivot toward a new and more caring direction by implementing the themes of care within our schools. And this is slowly occurring with, as we implement social emotional curriculum, um, but I think it could be even better and move more quickly if more of us were becoming familiar with um, Ms. Noddings and her work. I think it would be well worth our while. I'm really glad that I chose to um, do my research on Nell Noddings. Um, it was, she was somebody who popped up in our readings time and again, not only because she wrote articles, but also because multiple people were referencing her. And so I'm really glad I chose um, to study her for my curriculum scholar um, project. And I hope you found this enlightening and interesting and that you wanna go find some of her stuff. Thank you.